I saw myself um, explode into a little cloud of post-it notes. I was just little slips of paper. Yet I was perceiving this from some new vantage point um, that was completely untroubled by what should have been a catastrophe. I was gone. And, and I looked out again and I was just a coat of paint, um, just kind of spread very thinly over the landscape and I was no more. Yet I was perceiving this from a perspective that was completely unfamiliar, that was objective, calm, unburdened, and liberated. And I had been liberated from my ego. Uh, my ego had dissolved and uh, it wasn't frightening, it was just the way things should be and I felt completely reconciled to it. I mean, I think most of us think we're, we're, we're identical to our ego. That's who we are. And to learn that you're not, that there is another ground on which to stand and, and face life that is less defended, uh, that is not building walls against other people, against nature, that's not looking for like, am I up or am I down? You know, just in the, the whole kind of metrics of ego experience um, is incredibly uh, freeing. Uh, and it, it gives you uh, an insight that experienced meditators have that other people who've done a lot of personal development work and perhaps psychotherapy understand that the ego is a tool, that it's one voice among many that you can cultivate in your, in your head. And getting past it gives you an opportunity to experience life in a less guarded way, less defended way, which means a deeper, stronger connection to nature, a deeper, stronger connection to other people in your life. Um, these channels open up uh, and, and they're very often filled with love. Um, connections that we defend against normally um, to protect ourselves. Or death, for example. I mean, that um, when you've experienced ego dissolution, death is less frightening um, because death is one of the big things egos defend us against. Make no mistake, egos have great value. There's a reason we evolved to have egos. They get a lot done, they, they pursue our evolutionary goals of you know, survival and reproduction and they do it with great success, but at a cost, at a cost of disconnection. Disconnection from other people, disconnection from nature, and for some people disconnection from divinity, however they define it. Um, so for me that's, that's one of the most interesting phenomena in this work, uh, that we now recognize we have a chemical, a molecule, that can help people achieve this dissolution of ego and that doing so has enormous therapeutic value. Um, if you think about the, the people who are trapped in habits of thought, people who are depressed or anxious, very often there is an ego telling a very destructive story. Um, I am unworthy of love. I can't get through the day without a cigarette or a drink. Um, my work is worthless. Uh, and to silence that voice or to realize that that voice is just one voice that you don't have to listen to allows people to break out of habits, really destructive habits of thought and behavior. 